going to get through this, okay? We got to get over to that roof. What? You're going to jump first. Now I'm going to throw the kids over one at a time. No way. Manny, we don't have a choice. We're going to die here. Your family needs your strength, Jack. Comedy, right? <laughs> Pretty funny, right? The comedy right here? This one? This the comedy show? of life. <laughs> no, the comedy of No Escape that I made. <laughs> <laughs> Is this, were you nervous about that? Going into something that, that wasn't, wasn't funny? a comedy? Wasn't funny? Because you've been um, doing a lot of comedy for a while, right? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I mean, I was somewhat nervous just because it was so, fi so physical and emotional um, in a way that, yeah, I hadn't been practicing those muscles, hadn't been working that, you know. Um, in a long time, and I was nervous that perhaps those muscles had atrophied, but <laughs> um, but in the end, it was okay. You know, I think, um, strangely, when you do drama, it's this, it provides this kind of respite to all the silliness, and then vice versa. So after doing this, I was like, I need to shoot some children's hospital ASAP, you know? <laughs> Something adult swim flavored. <laughs> but there is something uh, in watching the movie, you know, you, Owen Wilson, and Pierce Brosnan are three incredibly charming people. And at the top of the movie, before all the drama starts unfolding, I found myself, oh, I love these people. These are great. They're so charming and wonderful. Right. When you guys weren't shooting all of the action sequences and all of the dramatic moments, were you guys off camera hanging out and joking around? I normally don't ask that, but everybody seemed very lovely um, in the film. <laughs> What's so strange is that when I when I signed on to the movie, I was like, oh, this is going to be such a fun movie because it's Owen Wilson and me and like elephants in Thailand and, you know. But in the end, um, it, you know, because of the nature of the movie and the, and the subject matter, there was a tremendous respect from both, from, from all of us, from Owen and myself and Pierce, just a respect for the sur getting there, like emotionally and trying to deliver in that fashion. So um, I would say I, I really did kind of look to Owen to think like, are we, are we gonna like joke around, are we joking around at all in between takes? And, and I was like, okay, we're not, okay. That's okay. We'll do it in another something else. We'll do that somewhere else. You know. I'll so, see you at the hotel bar wrap oh, there day. Was, there was okay. It's, yeah, because he just was so beautifully committed to everything, and I think he kind of led the charge. You know, he was sort of the uh, he was sort of the papa bear of the scenario, and I was the mama bear. And we had these two young little girls who were very b b incredible actresses, Sterling and Claire. And they, you know, are genuinely young little girls who are there experiencing very scary scenarios. And um, it was very easy for both Owen and I to feel protective of them. So. Did you feel protective of the sort of pretend experience as well and, and having to sort of shield them a little bit? Yeah, because that's the crazy thing about um, shooting a movie like this is that it is still extraordinarily scary sometimes, you know, just to you know, kind of close your eyes and imagine yourself in a situation like that. And that's, the movie is, um, you know, constantly poses the question of what would you do? You know, at the end of the day, I think it's all of our um, sort of primal responsibility to protect thy own, right? To protect your children, certainly, and, and also your friends or your your family and, you know, uh, or just another stranger, you know, <laughs> which um, if you are a compassionate person, you know, you can find yourself in that position too. And certainly we look to the headlines today and there's all kinds of stories that, that sort of represent that feeling, that sentiment. And so the movie does play on something very honest and in in, in very kind of primal, topical. Primal almost, yeah. topical, but also primal in terms of taking care yeah. of your own. And you just, I mean, you, you just had a child, right? Yes. Like eight, <laughs> eight or 18 months ago? Um, 10 months ago. 10 months ago. So yeah. you, had, uh, were you, you hadn't had the baby when you were shooting this, I'm imagining. I, I didn't. And, um, you know, often I think back on whether that would have changed my performance at all. And I, I don't think it changes my performance because sure. at the end of the day, it's like, 
you know, I did feel a great protection for those two It'd little be funny girls. If it had suddenly changed the performance yeah. for me. Like, were you? Did you have the? Ba- oh, movie's over. I can't. Yeah, I, I can't. I have to. I'd totally have to unrealistic. Reshoot it. Yeah. I'd have to completely reshoot it. No, <laughs> um, but I think watching the movie as a mom is vastly different because you know I'm just I I watch it and I'm sort of I do feel like I'm on a a roller coaster of emotions and I think that. That's what makes it, I guess, you know, I never really watch movies like this. I was um, telling you that I'm not really big into kind of thrill movies or personally, (laughs) um, nor am I into roller coasters. But when I watch this movie, I'm like, oh, now I get it. Now I get why people want to continue to watch them and go on roller coasters multiple times. I think they're crazy, these people. What's the most horrifying experience you've had or thrilling experience you've ever had at a movie? Um, thrill filled thrilling could be comedic <laughs> or anything so thrill filled or scary it's too hard I mean that's like that's too, it's too large I mean I'm, I'm a movie goer I love movies you know I make movies I want to be in movies I want to watch movies you know what I'm saying like I love that shit you know what I'm saying so right like it's awesome <laughs> movies Absolutely. movies ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Do you do you see a difference between uh, movies and television? Because you've made a, you've made yeah. a feature film, you've directed in television as well, and I feel like there's a constant conversation these days about um, not the validity of movies, but the sort of cultural resonance of movies versus versus television. Well, what's so cool is about we're we're in a time where you know television and movies can be equally as robust and exciting and and creatively challenging and all those kinds of things. So. Um, I, I tend to, I find, <laughs> um, you know, I find that personally, I don't know that I have time. I get a little intimidated by TV right now because there's so many things oh, yeah. to watch, right? So we're it's all impossible. Yeah, I feel like I'm in a fail TV class. You know, like I can't, there's no way I could possibly every, like do all the homework. You know every dinner, saying? every dinner party, I feel like I'm just going like, look, I don't have time. I, don't, oh I can't God. do it. Like. Constantly, I'm telling my husband like, we'll go to you know a dinner party or something, and people will be. It's like that moment where people are talking like, oh, have you seen the new, you know, I don't know, insert a thousand movie or yeah. TV um, titles here. Or like, you don't and watch that show? And I'm like, well, how many seasons are there? Like, five. Well, I'm not going to start. I I'm can't sorry. start like, now. I'm in jail. Like, I'm in TV prison. I, and so I say to him, I remember the other night, I just was like, so what are we going to, can we, like, get on the same page about what movie, like what TV show we're going to watch? I mean, just as a couple? Because I think like our dinner party game will really elevate, you know? Because we can then argue about it in front of people and like it can be our thing, you know? You make, she loves this, but he likes this. Yeah, this exactly. Is, oh, so like my I life try, is the same. Exactly. And, but I remember he was like, well, you know, you never want to watch them with me. And he sometimes secretly reveals that he's watching a television show. And I'm like, why would you do that to me? And he then, because he draws, my husband's an amazing tattoo artist and artist, and so he, when he's drawing, he just puts TV shows on. And I will, it will all of a sudden be revealed that he has seen the entire two seasons of True Detective without me. Like, just, like, I was not even consulted, you know? You're fine. Don't worry. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, I know it's controversial. See, I do know that there was a conversation about True Detective and that, you know, people liked it or didn't or whatever. Someone out here did. I think I got a boo for that joke. What? Are we booing? <laughs> All right. Seems like it. I got to be careful. Oh. <laughs> Don't say anything negative about True Detective here. Uh, That's I loved not... it. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it. <laughs> uh, so, so you signed on for this movie. You've been doing comedy for a while. Did you step into, uh, I mean, not only comedy, but did you step into your career knowing that you were going to be more geared towards comedy? Or was that something that kind of developed and then you stuck with it? It, it, it was organic how that, how that rolled out. Um, I went to drama school in England. I, you know, it was all very important and, you know, <laughs> fancy. And, you know, we used, we did plays with the word thou in them. And, you know, and then, um, and then I came to America and it was, you know, because I, I came back here and it was a big culture talk and it was kind of like, you know, like, wear a push-up bra, kid, you know, that kind of stuff. And then um, <laughs> I was You want to be like, taken seriously as a dramatic actor. I know. I was like, okay, I will. What kind? You know, and I, I was very optimistic about it all. But I did start in, in drama just because that felt like the natural thing to do. And then I started doing little things in comedy and realized that, ooh, quality of life. Like, it's actually nice to laugh all day or joke around and, you know, come to work and kind of, like, you get 
paid to kind of act like a 12 year old, but be a grown adult, you know, and that sounded really appealing. Um, <laughs> and, and so, you know, so, so now that I do tr tend to do that. And also when I write, I think on comedy more than I do. Dramatic. Did you, uh, did, were you ever nervous when you first started performing with comedians? Like if you're performing with like kind of celebrated comedians, yeah. I mean, there's always the feeling of like, oh, I want to get a joke in here, but then I'm not the comedian, so oh. I don't really want to. Oh my God, a thousand percent. You throw I your mean, joke like, out and you get the kind of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's totally intimidating initially because, because <laughs> I would work with people that I genuinely look up to and that I think are hilarious. And um, <laughs> on top of that, they are very celebrated um, improvisation people. So um, I, I think, you know, I never came up doing stand up comedy or in, in improv or anything like that. So, um, you know, I can do it, but in a way that's like I can hold my own within the, the realm of what I understand and what I'm comfortable doing. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, when I came on Children's Hospital, I mean, the people that, that was definitely like a family unit that was kind of Rob Cordry called me and sort of said would you do it and then it was like David Wayne who I knew and Marino and all the you know Rob Hubel and Aaron Hayes everyone was just people that I knew but you know there are definitely moments with like respect kind of right. you know I like I'll play with you but like you're funny. tell me your you joke know? and I'll respond to your joke yeah, yeah. exactly like uh, we would do panels that was the most intimate we would go to we would go to comedy um comedy festivals with children with children's hospital and i would feel intimidated being on stage you know in in a capacity of like we're here to just be funny hi guys <laughs> you know and like they would be like yeah and farts and stuff and they, you know they would be just making jokes that's not even that funny farts but in general that farts does are get a always laugh. funny traditionally it does get a laugh and so you know they would feel very comfortable in that setting and i would be quite intimidated um and so more and more so i'm kind of like all right well you know i'm i know who i am i'm like that's not me i will occasionally t like right now i'm not like freaking out or anything you know totally freaking out <laughs> I, i'm i are you freaking out no i'm fine I, I mean, i'm, I totally, could, I'm I mean, not freaking like, out i'm fine i'm, I'm fine. drinking green tea so yeah. it's keeping me going uh you also have a, a pretty big part in i think one of the most maybe the most anticipated series of the year of of a number of people's lives, and that is uh, Wet Hot American Summer first day of camp. Congratulations, oh, yeah. it's great. I mean. What was, um, I've heard, you know, everybody wants to know what the vibe on set was like, because I think people imagine a lot of joking around, but from what I've heard, it was, the schedules were so rigorous yeah. that there was really no time for any messing around in between scenes. Yeah, I mean, it's not dissimilar from Children's Hospital where um, on Wet Hot, we, we really didn't have much time, um, especially because if you've seen it, you notice that not everybody's in the same shot. You know, it's like he, David really had to shoot people out. Um, and uh, so, so I was there four months out of giving birth, by the way. So I was kind of like baby brain. I couldn't even... You know this baby brain thing? Do you know about that? People, no, okay, tell me. It's like a thing. I mean, some of the ladies <laughs> will know what I'm talking about. Um, but <laughs> what? It's birth. Um, it's life. Ladies, um, tell me about baby brain. Ladies. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, no, it's basically you're dumb when you, 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 like, you give birth and then all of a sudden you can't find basic words. And so when I was shooting that... Um, that show, What Hot American Summer. You just had given birth four months prior? Yeah, so I just was like, how do I be a mom and like be funny and bur and like breastfeed and you know, it was just my child and life and what is life and what are we doing? You want me to, what do you, he was like, you, like yeah. what is, what's the bit here? <laughs> like, you know, it was just a constant kind of. What's the silly thing you want me to do? I miss my child. Yeah, <laughs> I know, exactly. I just couldn't even, um, I couldn't figure out. I was like, is this funny? What are these, tater tots? Are we gonna talk about the tater tots? Anyway, should I go back and breastfeed? You know, Was so. that something that was uh, unexpected for you? I mean, I, I listened to an interview with you recently where you talked about how motherhood was never necessarily the plan, but once it was a reality, did you find the sort of connection to your baby to be something as overwhelming as people always talk about? Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, right, it's crazy. Okay, you can, know. it is, <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm giving you a scoop. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> um, it really is. Like, there's something, because um, I'm quite work-centric. You know, I love what I do, and I respect it very much, and I love the people I work with, and I, I, I consider it a great privilege. Um, and when I had 
my child, you know, I sort of, as I do everything, I make lists of how, you know, and organize how things will play out. And you have a child and all of those lists are just like elsewhere. You know, it's just all gone. And the only thing that matters is that fucking kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is not questioned. And, and the other thing that I thought was really crazy was we all feel so kind of, you know, our, what we do for a living is inherently kind of self-involved, right? Like, you're sitting there, you're, you're being an actor, and you're talking about stuff. People are like, what do you think? And how do you think? And I hope I don't die in this crash, and better look both ways so a car doesn't hit me and I don't die, right? It's all that stuff. And then you have a baby, and you're just like, I will jump in front of that car. Like, I do, I have, me, me doesn't matter quite as much anymore, you know? It's like, I'm the supporting character in this person's movie now, you know? And that is profound, so. Well, uh, speaking of motherhood, you know, uh, you made this video recently um, about uh, having it all, right? Whether yeah. it's possible as a woman to have it all. Let's take a, a quick look uh, at a clip from this video. Hey, I'm Lake Bell. I'm a new mom, I'm a filmmaker, I'm an actor, I'm a wife, I'm a pretty good housekeeper, mediocre cook, and I'm trying to figure out how to do it all. And so I'm gonna hit the streets. And, Are you a mom? Are you a mama? I'm trying to figure out if some ladies can give me some insight on that. How do you do it all? Hi, excuse me. Hi, I'm, I'm an actress, my name's Lake Bell. I'm not a weirdo. Can I talk to you about work and being a mom and juggling it all? Oh, jeez. I just had a baby and I'm trying to figure out how to like, have a life. And are you a mom? Yes, I am. I have a seven-year-old daughter. I have three daughters. Okay, and how's it going so far? <laughs> How old is your person, your child? I have four. Do you have what? four children? Yeah. You deserve an award. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you're working? Yes. I was wondering if I could talk to you about what it is to work really hard and also be a mom. Are you a mom? Or no. do you choose not to be a mom? Uh, neither. Um, you're a mom. Yes, I am. Are you mom yes. too? Okay. Yes. So, and we both ladies, you work? Yes. yes. Okay, what is your career? I'm in the military. I'm a sergeant first class in the army. Okay. I did and not think you were going to say that. Overseas. Okay. Yes. And you? I'm um, a captain on corrections in Rikers Island. Jesus, you guys are bad <laughs> ass. Um, <laughs> so... First question coming out of that is, uh, I have to do man on the streets sometimes for my job. Did you find them to be as awful as I find them to be? Okay, here, the I really want you guys to see that because like that's the beginning part, that's just a setup and then it gets kind of sweet. Um, but but anyway, so yeah, I mean at times it was, it is quite, it's thankless, right? You're just like, I'm a jerk, hi. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, Excuse me, let me interrupt your day. Excuse me, let me interrupt your day. Exactly. Like, here's the last thing you want to do is be on camera. Hello? Let me interrupt your day and put you in my video. I know. Again, me, me, me. But, but at the end of the day, I thought that actually um, the are you a mom became a thing because um, if I could get it out quick enough that I'm like, hey, I'm a mom. I'm just trying to figure out how to make it work. Hello? <laughs> like, they, moms were constantly like, I will talk to you, young lady. You know? Um, because a lot of them are just like, I know, me too, right? Like, what are we doing? How are we doing this, you know? Well, that's so interesting because I feel like uh, having it all as a, as a woman, as a mother, is a pretty big cultural conversation. But I would imagine, even if it is the biggest cultural conversation, it probably still feels individual to you. It, totally, it does. Because everybody's experience is utterly different. But, um, but you're right. I think that it is, it is a phenomenon. And we always, we're always talking about it, especially now, because, you know, women work their asses off and they try to, and in all parts of their life, right? So you're, and guys, I love you guys. This is not like guy hating at all. Uh, you are included in that. Um, Chill out men's rights um, activists in the audience. No, we know you're men's here. Men's rights. <laughs> no, but the idea is like, why are we so fascinated with it? We're really, we're, we're thoughtful about it because... Uh, it's very difficult to kind of balance everything, but the truth is, and what I found from this video and what I find in general, just talking to friends and stuff, um, is that there are no real answers. It's not like, oh, you know, here's the answer. This is how you can do it all. It's just, it's about community and support and camaraderie among women. So if we can all just accept that you're not gonna do everything perfectly, you know, you can do it all. It just means kind of managing your expectations of how 
how phenomenally you're going to kind of attack all these things. You know, are, are you a baby book type of person, or are you the type of person who feels like you know the mistakes that you make will be a good thing, and you're smart enough to learn from them, and you don't necessarily need to kind of. So you mean like read baby books and stuff? Yeah, yeah, like dive into baby books and child literature and all. That oh stuff. no, I'm I'm down with that stuff. We do. I, do you know Rye, Do you know Rye parenting? Have you heard of that? I'm big into. There's this type of parenting. Like my my husband and I both were kind of like. We didn't know what to do. We're like, hello, child, you know, <laughs> sorry, you know, that's our first word we're going to say to you. Um, and so we read books, and of course, yeah, and there's this, there's this philosophy of parenting called Rye. What is um, that? It's, it's very, <laughs> um, how do I express this? Um, it's, it's, it's like giving the baby the benefit of the doubt in their learning and their understanding. So instead of kind of over... Help, helping them with everything. It's sort of narrating and telling them um, oh, yeah, yeah. kind of what you're doing. So, hello, I'm going to, hello, you know, instead of talking to it like it's a prop or a little, like, yeah, you, 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 you know, like, they don't understand that. That's not going to help anything, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's be, p treating them with the respect that they do understand because we're not quite sure when they do start to understand. So hopefully it all kind of follows. This is the first time I've ever talked about it publicly. So, 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 like, so like in a world, it's again trying to sort of kill baby talk <laughs> yes, out there. Another way to kill baby talk. Um, Thank God. Yeah, I know. It's just not like, hey, baby. <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> I love you. I think we have time for some audience questions. Yeah. Do people have questions uh, out here? In the back, I a see lady. a hand that just went shooting straight to the sky. And then she ducked down. She ducked yeah. down. Oh, you're disappeared. Uh, both hands. That doesn't mean you get two questions. No. Select, select, select. Hi. Hi, Lake. First of all, I'm a huge fan of Hi. everything you do. Thank you. Um, I comedy that. No Escape is amazing. Um, <laughs> so I am wondering what it was like to work with the wonderful brothers Dowdle, and what sort of lesson do you think you learned about yourself and about your acting in this kind of departure? Um, great question, thank you. Um, the Dowdle brothers were awesome and I am very thankful that they took a chance on myself uh, in this role uh, for the very reason that it is not something that I would traditionally do. Um, but I thought they were kind of sneaky and smart by doing that because they do lull the audience into this false sense of like, well, shit can't get that bad. It's Owen and that chick from fucking whatever, what happens in Vegas. So, you know, they'll be like, it's gonna be fine. Um, and then in the end, it's like not fine at all. Oh, no, um, shit gets real Oh, shit bad. goes real. <laughs> um, real quick. Um, so, so, you know, I, I think they're very cool for, for taking a chance. And, um, and also the Dowdle brothers who made no escape, um, you know, part of what's so strange about them is that they smile all the time. They're just like happy guys. And they thought up this fucking crazy situation. Um, and my mom came to visit in Thailand and, and um, you know, she was like, I just, I don't understand why such nice boys would come up with such a scary movie, you know? So um, my mom doesn't actually sound like that, but, um, but for the purposes of this conversation, she does. Um, but anyway, so, you know, they, you know, they are very, um, you know, they, they've got a, a great attitude, too, which is kind of my favorite thing about people, um, you know, working with people in this industry. If they can have that and get to do this extraordinary job, it's, it's a win-win. Yeah, having a great attitude, is that, do you come across every now and then bad attitudes in the industry or people who take the industry itself too seriously over the... I think it's that. Yeah. It, it's the thing of, you know, everything's oh so important, you know, and, and sometimes we all, I think in any industry we can all be guilty of, you know, everything being just oh so important and everyone gets so mad and furrowed brows and people yell at each other and throw things and I'm just like, really? Because we're making a movie. Did you ever have trouble, though, not hitting moments like that when you were making your movie? Because as the writer and director of a movie, it can be, the stress can be a little bit, a little bit different. I am a non-confrontational person. I will do everything, to a fault, I will do everything to just not um, get to that point. So when I run a set in any capacity, whether it's on Children's Hospital or you know, something larger, like in a world, um, I, I make a point, and I think because I've been an actor in the trenches looking out, I just I always make a point to make sure every check in with everyone, make sure everyone's having a good time, and you know, are you good? Are, you, are we good? Let's get eye to eye on these things, you know, 
just to make sure that the experience in general is fun. Because at the end of the day, people work so hard um, on a film set for it's it's only for a moment, right? But people gun it, right? You just the hours are crazy and it's stressful and sometimes it's hot or it's too cold or it's you know and you're trying to find emotion and it, there's just a lot going on and um, in order to get that hustle and to maintain it for the sake of efficiency, I say choose life, be kind, you know, and, and do comedy. Yeah, at least people are laughing during <laughs> those hours. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next question. Got the stripes. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask you, when you finish filming a movie like this that's kind of traumatic, do you take anything with you afterwards? Or is there like a period where, you know, you might be have some kind of drama after a film like this? Um, if anything, it's more, I mean, it's a great question. I think if anything, it's more, um, I definitely need time to decompress from any job, you know, just to kind of, palate cleanser, you know, um, just to kind of get yourself situated emotionally back down to to lake, you know, because um, this is not only was it crazy uh, to shoot, and if when you see the movie, you'll see that there are scenes that are really intense and traumatizing somewhat, um, but really just... Um, just to center myself like anything, you know, it's like I, I like to take a few days at least. It, for this movie in particular, I had my honeymoon right after. So um, I sh that shook off really quickly because we were in beautiful Thailand, which, you know, we're like, let's just, you Where know. in Thailand were you? Uh, Phuket. Oh, you were in Phuket? Yeah. We went to Phuket. We went, we went Bangkok and then Phuket, and it's very beautiful. And I know it's, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm sad. I feel like, you know, after working there, I'm not sure, you know, how they feel about the movie or whatever, but the, the point is, is that when we shot it, we had um, such an amazing group of people. It was like 90% uh, Thai crew, and we all worked so beautifully together, and I can't think of a more sort of generous, hardworking group of people, so. Absolutely. Uh, next question. Hello. Oh, hi. Um, so I loved How to Make It in America. Right on. Um, <laughs> do you think a continuation of the show is in the future? Or in the cards? I don't know, like, how that works. You know, now, I would, back in the day, I would have been like, no way, there's no way that, that just doesn't happen. You know, movies don't get resurrected into movie form, uh, or TV doesn't get resurrected into movie form. But now it seems to be happening more and more. So I can't be like, no. I would say, I don't know. You know, <laughs> that's kind of the, the difference. Um, it was really fun to do it for two years. Um, it's how I met my husband. Um, and so I'm thankful for that. <laughs> Next question? Right here in the front? front. Two in the front. Hey. Hello. Hey. I can't help but ask uh, what it was like working with Kid President on his show. Oh, Kid President. Nice. Um, he is a gentleman. Um, uh, it was super cool. I, <laughs> I, 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 he couldn't have been cuter. I mean, um, I love what he does, and I think he's um, a great role model. <laughs> uh, last question. Hi, I have a question. Um, would you ever consider you and your child like doing a movie together or something like that, like in the future? No, <laughs> never. Um, and I only say that because I want to protect her <laughs> from things like that. <laughs> um, I feel emotionally protective of her and uh, keeping her away from all that fuss. What kind of fuss? The, the fuss of, of sort of forcing a self-involvement? I mean, being on a set and being in a movie or a TV show definitely, I think, forces a self-involvement. Everybody's there for you. It, it does, and it's also just, um, you know, my main obsession right now is getting her to a field of grass, you know? I just, you know, I live in Brooklyn, and I have, you know, a nice, I have a lovely home, but I think the idea of her you know, being in nature, because the idea, my husband and I constantly talk about, you know, I grew up in New York City, Manhattan, and, you know, I love this city so much. Um, but, uh, you know, I regret maybe not being able to be out in nature as, like, as a regular, right? It was, it was sort of like, New York is real, and then we go to this other place where there's, like, trees and stuff, you know, versus, I want to reverse that, <laughs> so that it's like, you know, the earth, 
is real, the planet is real, <laughs> okay? And then you can go to those other places that has concrete and stuff, you know? Like, I want it to be reversed. So that You want her to be more earthy than you and maybe know more about <laughs> what to do with herself in the woods than, than, than yeah, you might know? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm That's married. exactly what I would want for my kid. <laughs> yeah. Cause, and, and Take to, me camping. Show me what to do. <laughs> totally. And to bring them into an environment where they have to kind of, like, deal with this stuff. I mean, it's it's it's... You know, it's 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 scary and it's it's false. You know, I think you have to be a certain age before that becomes um, okay. You know. Well, like, thank you so much for joining me. It's been a thank pleasure you. talking to you. It's thank always you so, so nice. Congratulations on No Escape, Thanks. Children's Thanks. Hospital, Wet Hot American Summer, Your Child. Congratulations. <laughs>